Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's review we're going to be taking a look at the newly released Toy World's Nemesis Prime or as the packaging refers to it as the Commander of Tactical Operations. Now if you are in the market for picking this figure up it is available and in stock right now over at the Icon store so for that of course I will leave a link down in the description box below and be sure to use discount code Prime versus Prime for a total discount off of your order. Taking a look here at the packaging this particular figure comes fresh off of the back of their highly successful successful Toy World Optimus Prime and basically what this figure is here is a slightly modified version of Nemesis Prime essentially they have tightened up some of the tolerances not all of the tolerances however I will delve more into that later on in the review and they have also packed in a slew of new additional accessories that were only originally available to you if you picked up the deluxe edition taking a look here at the box art this is by far the superior box design when compared to the original version you can see that we have some fantastic illustrative arts here of what I believe is Cybertron you can see that the illustrations really do look fantastic 12 inch collectible robot new universe new legends we also do have the tactical waistcoat website here on the bottom as we take a look here we also do have the toy world logo or as I presume they are now going by tactical waistcoat as we turn it around here to the side of the packaging you can see that we've got this specular looking design as if though black paint has been splattered across the box and then as we take a look here towards the back of the box once again we have a fantastic image here of what I believe is supposed to resemble that of Cybertron if you just remove this sleeve section, you can see that it will reveal the main box itself. So this is merely the box cover. You can see that once again, a very nice looking package. Tactics Waistcoat Commander of Tactical Operation. As we take a look here at the front, we have a fantastic piece of artwork here of the actual Nemesis Prime himself with a very slight quote here saying hi. And I really do love how the black and white contrasts with the incredibly vibrant looking eyes there. Really, really awesome. But the packaging isn't the only visually appealing piece of art that we actually get with this piece as the instructions in my opinion are so awesome as we take a look here at the actual front cover you can see that we have a fantastic piece of artwork there of nemesis prime once again the commander of tactical operation as we actually open the instructions up we have some fantastic art illustrations there of nemesis prime with some quotes you can see that i really do think this looks incredible these are by far a lot more visually interesting than what we got with the original version you can see that each time we turn the page we are witness to once again some fantastic artwork definitely showing how much of a brute this particular incarnation of Nemesis Prime is, especially when we get to what is my favourite piece of artwork, Nemesis Prime decapitating what I presume is an Autobot or perhaps some other robotic organism on another planet. You can see that the artwork really is splendid and then you can see the instructions here on the sides of which are incredibly detailed and for sure help you through the transformation. And you can see here that once again, really awesome looking posing, the traditional G1 Optimus Prime pose as well as the pose that we see him in in the Bumblebee movie. Definitely a really awesome looking release. And then finally, this I believe is the final piece of artwork, that being Nemesis Prime standing proud over the ruins of another race. And you can also see there an incredibly scratched out looking Decepticon insignia. So for sure, fantastic artwork with this particular release. But without further ado, let's get on to the main figure himself. And so now, starting off here firstly by taking a look at the entire array of accessories that this figure comes with, you can see that he for sure comes with an incredibly impressive amount. And that's because Toy World have actually included doubles of certain accessories in order for you to either get the red Nemesis Prime look or the purple Nemesis Prime look, which in my opinion is absolutely fantastic. Taking a look here very quickly at the Ion Blaster, I will only be covering one of these as they are exactly the same in terms of sculpt and paint application. You can see that in my opinion, I believe they have done such a terrific job on this particular blaster very reminiscent to that of what we saw in the movie and you can see here that the paint applications that have been applied definitely do give you an incredibly realistic look as stated previously both of the blasters are designed in order to give you either the red nemesis prime look or the purple nemesis prime so if you push this button here you can see that this one will actually shoot out a red laser beam and you can hear there the sound effects and the LED function cooperating with one another, which in my opinion is absolutely fantastic. Just very quickly showing you how the purple effect looks. You can see very vibrant in terms of the LED and in my opinion is a super nice added bonus. You can also see that we do get a pair of red axe pieces as well as purple axe pieces as well as some blast effects. Now these blast effects here I believe were exclusive initially to the original deluxe version. However with the Nemesis Prime pack you do indeed get these included which in my opinion is fantastic as when you do actually peg these into either of the blasters the light is bright enough to actually penetrate through this in order to give you the illusion that this is indeed firing which is so so awesome. These are very similar to that of Siege and Earthrise so you can actually 
break these up into smaller components if you so desire. We also do get four different head sculpts. Now, in my opinion, this is slightly overkill as two of the head sculpts I really don't believe that you need, but just bringing them in here for a closer look. These ones were originally designed to actually peg onto the 3A slash 0 DLX Optimus as these were designed with ball joints, whereas the actual Toy World Optimus had a hinge joint up and down. So just giving you a very quick look at these, you can see that the sculpt work as well as the paint work is near enough identical. It is just merely the LED, which is different as you can see. One is purple and one is red. And in my opinion, I do believe that these look absolutely terrific. However, these actually do have a slightly larger role to play with this particular Nemesis Prime release, which I'll touch on in just a bit. Bringing in these head sculpts, these are actually the ones that come mandatory on the figure. This is your traditional Toy World Optimus Prime clip-on neck. So you can see that this actually clips onto the Prime figure. And this time around, the LEDs are activated by pushing the mouth plate. I am happy to report that the mouth plate on this particular rendition is a lot tighter than that of the original version. I do know that many had criticisms that on the original Tactical Commander, the mouth plate continuously flopped down, giving him a rather unusual look. However, they are very tight on this particular release, and I believe that the LEDs look absolutely fantastic on both of these. And you can see that you just push them, and it does turn them off. We, of course, do get these two different axe pieces. One is slightly larger than the other one, although the sculpt work and the paintwork is very similar. In order to actually extend these, you simply just elongate that handle section, and of course, you can bring out the smaller attachment and just slide that there over the top, and that is how it looks with the red effect on, or what you can actually do is compress both of these sections and combine them in order to give a Nemesis Prime shield, and I think that this is really awesome, so you can see that when combined, it does create for this very steel metallic-like plate. However, of course, you can bring in some of the effects, so I'll showcase it here with the purple blast effect. You simply just want to snap this section here over the top, and then, of course, repeat the same process here on the opposite side and then that gives you a purple nemesis prime shield and of course you can mix and match these particular pieces in order to give you either the red look or actually a combination you can have both purple and red it's really up to your own desire but just very quickly showing you how this axe looks the larger one with the blade you can see that it is for sure an incredibly intimidating looking weapon and i believe that the paint apps on these have come out really really nicely turning here to some of the earth mode components once again very similarly to that of the original version we do get options to actually swap out between earth mode look and and Cybertronian look. Of course, in the Bumblebee movie, Optimus Prime has a slightly different look whilst he is on Cybertron than he is on Earth, and these pieces here are used in order to replicate either look, which in my opinion is a really nice attention to detail. We do also get an actual plug socket here with the Toy World slash Tactical Waistcoat logo on there, and of course we do get a USB in order for you to actually charge some of the blasters up, as these do indeed have USB ports. I do believe that it is this end cap here that does come off, and you can see that you just stick that in there, and these do charge up which is really awesome so no need to buy batteries in order to power these up you can also see that we do get some different wheels as well obviously to accommodate his earth mode but some new accessories which i don't believe we got on the original version are these neck braces now these are brand new pieces which are designed for you to actually swap out this particular neck system so with this release the only range of motion that we got was a hinge joint up and down as well as a swivel joint however if you're not happy with that you can pull this piece clean off bring this section in and actually peg it on and take one of these head sculpts which actually has the ball joint on snap this on and you can have your tactics waistcoat commander either with a ball jointed head or a hinge joint head which can look up and down and they also do include another one as well for you to actually peg on to the standard optimus prime release which i think is really really awesome so i do believe that just about wraps up here for accessories so very quickly before we take a look at the main figure himself an accessory which i completely forgot to showcase which quite surprisingly is the largest of the accessories here is one of these barricades that we see in the transformers bumblebee movie these are exactly the same as what we got with the original Toy World Optimus so you can see that it is done in that amazing very reflective looking metallic finish it definitely looks very authentic in terms of its overall design and personally I do believe these to be quite nice inclusions for actually storing some of the accessories in however this is nowhere near big enough to store some of the actual shield pieces in so it won't be all that great for that however if you have some extra ion blasters or heads or some of the earth mode components they can definitely all store in that and I think that this makes for a really nice looking display so definitely quite an interesting accessory and was one that I wasn't necessarily expecting them to actually repackage with this particular Nemesis Prime. 
And so here he is, the Toy World Nemesis Prime, honestly looking absolutely fantastic. Toy World for sure definitely gave us one of the best third party transformable Optimus Primes when they did release their original version earlier on in this year. And this new particular version, considering all of the accessories that he does come with, in my opinion, could potentially be the best Nemesis Prime pack of all time. Taking a look here at the detailing, once again, as this is the same mold as that of the original version, the molding is more or less exactly the same, but you can see that in terms of detailing, I believe that the head sculpt looks remarkable for sure where the mouth plate is concerned you can see all of the fantastic sculpted and detailing there as well as the impeccable paint applications of course if you do push the mouth guard it will indeed activate the LED function and I think that that too looks beautiful when on the figure I have opted to go with the purple eyes as in my opinion I've always loved Nemesis Prime with purple eyes as opposed to the red eyes but either look will look terrific as we take a look here at the back of the head once again the detailing does continue as so it does here for the actual top section of Optimus Prime's chest you can see some fantastic sculpted in detailing as well as paint applications as we take a look here for the chest this time round we have got a red transparent plastic for the front windscreen with the window wipers a separate piece that you will have to add on straight out of the packaging you can see some really nice weathered effect here for the main section I have indeed gone the extra mile to add a Decepticon insignia here just to make him look slightly more faithful to how he would if he did indeed appear in the movie you can see that this is completely untouched out of the packaging so I haven't added any of the earth mode components these are the cybertronian stacks and they are once again very alien in their design which i think looks amazing as we take a look here to the torso region once again the mechanical detailing as well as the overall accuracy to the bumblebee movie in my opinion is mind-blowing if anything i do believe that it is slightly too squat and i maybe would have liked if they could have slightly extended it perhaps by five or ten percent but nonetheless i for sure think the detailing as well as the paint applications more than make up for it and as we take a look here to the back very similarly to that of the previous version it cleans up impeccably well you can see some phenomenal spine detailing which once again is accurate to the movie and the weathered effect too is really mind-blowing these sections here on the biceps are indeed die cast so that does add for an incredibly premium feel whilst actually maneuvering the figure around you can see here that in terms of the forearms the sculpt work as well as the paint work once again has been applied exceptionally well there with the teal green which is of course very iconic to that of nemesis prime we also do have the teal green here for the hip skirt as we take a look here to the thighs these two have also been given a lovely looking metallic finish and these two once again are made out of a die cast material as we take a look to the actual interior of the leg once again they have gone the extra mile to ensure that this figure is as detailed as possibly can be so you can see that we've got some fantastic sculpted in detailing as well as paint applications all the way throughout this piece i for sure think that this is one of the more impressive third party figures that i do own in my collection and you can see that we've got the amazing silver and black which contrasts really nicely as well as some of the singed paint apps in order to make this figure appear weathered and battered as we take a look here to the feet i believe that they have once again captured the overall design of this particular incarnation of optimus slash nemesis prime exceptionally well and you can see that as per tradition with cybertronian bumblebee optimus we do have the incredibly iconic batman symbols here for the wheels which are indeed removable for when we do indeed get him into vehicle mode so overall in terms of detailing as well as paint applications i believe this to be one of the best third party prime figures of all time now if you don't opt to actually swap out the neck brace in terms of articulation the head can look up and down as well as swivel left to right the arms here can rotate the full 360 however they've actually engineered a pull out joint in order for you to excel the range of motion so just to demonstrate that you can take this here and extend this joint which allows for a greater range of motion so we can rotate those there all the way around as well as hinge out to the sides we do get a full 360 rotation here at the bicep due to transformation we do get a well past 90 degree range of motion here at the elbow due to the figure having double jointed elbows turning our attention here to the wrists these can rotate the full 360 as well as hinge back and forth we do also get fully independently articulated fingers which are hinged at three points one there at the base one at the knuckle and then finally one at the tip and the same here is for all of the fingers as well as for the thumb however the thumb is indeed on a ball joint as so are these as well so you can slightly spray these apart if you so desire turning our attention here to the torso we do get a waist rotation however you will have to ensure that all of the hip armor is aligned in a way in order to accommodate this so that we don't get any clearance issues so just aligning that up you can see that that can rotate left to right we also do get a slight ab crunch which can tilt 
forwards and backwards. If we move some of this here out of the way, we can lift the leg all the way up to a fantastic degree as well as back. However, it is slightly hindered due to the nature of the way that this section here is designed. He can, of course, do the split on some fantastic, very heavy duty hinge joints. And then just bringing that down, we do get a rotation here at the fire. We do also get double jointed knees here. And similarly to some of the other joints, this here is completely die cast, which once again, just adds that extra layer of security when actually handling this figure so that you don't feel as if though you will break him and it adds a fantastic feel to this particular release as well he definitely feels like one of the more premium and high-end third party figures and then turning here to the feet these can pivot forwards and backwards as well as tilt side to side and of course rotate the full 360 in terms of tolerances when compared to the original version initially i did believe that they had fixed the issues here with the wrists and for this one here they have this is nowhere near as loose nor floppy as the original version however unfortunately the same cannot be said for this one you can see how easily it is to just move this particular wrist around considering that they have had a couple of months to actually tighten and strengthen up some of the joints it is unfortunate to see this still a problem on the now third release of course we had the standard version the deluxe version and now of course the nemesis repaint so i personally would have loved it if they would have gone the extra mile to ensure that this particular section here was really tight but nonetheless it's nothing that i'm pretty sure some super glue or floor polish is unable to fix and turning here to this section it does appear as if though this does lock into place a lot more securely than what we got once again on the original version so that is for sure a tolerance that they have indeed tightened up so overall in my opinion in terms of robot mode i believe that he is almost completely flawless and so now turning to the integration of some of the accessories of course we'll begin with one of the newer attributes to this figure so in terms of actually swapping out this entire neck section you essentially just want to put some pressure here on this section and just basically wriggle this section clean off and you can see that it did require quite a significant amount of force to actually pop that off but once it is removed we can then bring in our neck brace and you can see that this does have some grooves and some slots so basically this here is going to sit right over the top of this cavity and you're just going to want to squeeze all of this in until it clips nice and securely into place and you can see that it looks very seamless when actually added onto this top section and the paint applications for sure really do blend in rather nicely and in my opinion it does create quite a nice looking base whereas we did not get that here with this original version bringing in one of the head sculpts of which are on a ball joint i will bring in this one here you can see that you essentially just want to pop this here over the top and there is Nemesis Prime now with a ball jointed head. Now you can see that utilizing this piece, it does make him appear as if though he has got a slightly longer neck. However, many of you may actually prefer this look than compared to the look that we had when we used the mandatory head sculpt. Of course, we now get a greater range of motion. However, it is slightly limited when looking up. So that is something that you do sacrifice when actually swapping them out. However, this time now we can utilize the side to side movement. You can see that I didn't have that pushed in quite all the way but you can now hinge this here side to side as well as look down it can also tilt to many different angles so it really is up to your own personal preference on whether or not you prefer to have the hinge joint head sculpt or to have the ball joint personally i absolutely love that we now have a ball jointed head here for nemesis prime as i always prefer ball joints than as opposed to hinge joints as in my opinion it allows you to get a slightly more exaggerated and a little bit more expressive range of motion there out of the head in terms of actually swapping around some of the components i won't delve into it too much as i have already previously showcased it however something which i do actually like to do is remove these cyber Tronian stacks and bring in the earth mode ones you are going to need these for when we actually do get this figure transformed into truck mode in my personal opinion I think that these here look so much better on the figure you can see that the paintwork as well as the overall sculpt work on these look absolutely fantastic and they're just for contrast you can see that these ones are a lot thinner in terms of their design than the thickness that we do actually get to the more cylindrical earth mode smoke stacks so once again just removing this one here of course we can swap around some of the armor personally I don't necessarily find their much point to actually do so as you can see here the changes are very minimal it's merely now that we have these two circular sections than as opposed to these two slashes so I never really tend to swap these components out whatsoever and of course we do also get some different components here for where the sides of the arms are concerned but once again in my own personal opinion I don't believe that the change to be all that different so it really is up to your own interpretation on how you wish to display Nemesis Prime in order to actually utilize some of the accessories here we have his blaster now as showcased earlier 
earlier on, seeing as the wrists here are incredibly loose, I would recommend to actually bring out the pair of molded in fists as these are specifically designed to actually hold some of the weapons and due to them being made out of a rather firm piece of pliable material, the accessories are for sure not going to flop down nowhere near as much as they would if you were to use these particular wrists. Turning now to the actual integration here of the shield, so as stated in the accessory segment, if you do actually combine both of the axe pieces together, we can turn it into a shield and the way that Optimus does actually wield this, or should I say Nemesis Prime, is you essentially take this section here and fold it to the side which will reveal two tabs here and here and of course we do have two slots on this section so it really is just a matter of aligning this up appropriately and then snapping this here into the side of Prime's arm and all of the joints on the actual arms are incredibly tight so he will be able to withstand the main weight there of the shield and in my opinion that looks absolutely impressive, really really awesome and for sure can deflect some Autobot or perhaps some Decepticon firepower so for sure a really nice looking weapon and I think that the integration for the most part works seamlessly. So in terms of integration for accessories it is exactly the same as the previous version, everything works really nicely with this particular release besides the fact that the wrists unfortunately will not be able to withstand the weight of the blaster due to them being rather loose and floppy. Before we turn to the incredibly complex transformation, I first want to give you a very quick comparison between our new Toy World Nemesis Prime and of course the original version which was Optimus Prime. I personally believe these to be some of the best third party figures that we have ever gotten despite some of their minute flaws. I really do believe that these are incredibly impressive pieces. However, I wanted to quickly demonstrate how you can utilize this particular piece on your pre-existing Toy World Optimus Prime. Now unfortunately, I have appeared to misplaced the original ball jointed head that did come with this release so I won't be able to show you how that actually looks but you can see that it works in exactly the same way so you essentially do just pop this section off which does come off a lot easier than compared to our Nemesis Prime and then just pop this section here on over the top and you can see that once again I believe that the colour match is perfect and it really does look fantastic so of course if you do have that ball jointed Optimus Prime head and are easily able to find it you can just pop that onto there and you'll have full range of motion but just very quickly giving you a comparison between the colours in their bodies you can see that they are very similar in terms of their moulding almost identical however of course they are now Optimus Prime and Nemesis Prime and I really do believe that these are some of the best Nemesis Prime and Optimus Prime trans transformable figures that we have ever gotten and you can see here unfortunately how loose this particular wrist is but you can see that this one definitely is a lot more secure so it for sure may just be a case of the tolerances may vary depending on your release but this to me for sure is definitely rather unacceptable. So now turning to the Toy World Nemesis Prime's transformation it is for sure a transformation which will take a considerable amount of time and precision in order to get a really awesome looking truck mode. A few things to note however is that I have actually opted to revert back to the mandatory neck joint that we do get straight out of the packaging as although I have transformed this figure with the new neck piece I have found it to make the clearance pretty much minimal and you of course don't want to cause damage here to the actual antennas slash ears of Optimus so I would highly recommend to go back to the original neck piece I have also swapped out for the more earth mode accurate looking smokestacks just as these are the ones that you are going to want to utilize for truck mode however you can indeed leave all of the other Cybertronian elements on this figure while converting so to begin with what I like to do is come here to the bicep and just bend at this elbow joint all of the way. We can then slightly arch this section here forwards as we're going to want to try and pop this section here out. So once that is popped, I like to then rotate the wrists all the way around and you can see in the way I have actually collapsed the fingers, you're then just going to want to collapse the thumb, bring this section here all the way over the top and of course just bring this all the way in there until it snaps nice and securely into place and we can then straighten out that elbow joint so that we are left with something along the lines of this. We can then take this section here and hinge that all the way over. Repeat the exact same process here on the opposite side. So just compress all of the fingers and take the thumb and situate it so that it is in a flat configuration. We can then take this piece here. I like to apply some pressure to this section as that will then allow this piece to pop out rotate the wrist all the way around so that the front is now facing the back. We can then of course hinge the elbow section up and hinge the double joints up as well just to allow for some clearance and then just proceed to fold all of this in nice and appropriately and then straighten out that elbow. Come here to the side and once again hinge this section all the way in. We can then turn our attention here to the back and this is for sure where things can get slightly complex. So you're going to want to take this piece here and just angle this there out of the way. We can then come to these sections and you're going to want to lift those up here on both sides. Once that's done, you can then take these pieces 
and angle these out here just essentially pull those completely out towards the back. I then like to turn my attention to these pieces and just rotate those around so that we are left with some clearance as this piece is going to fold down. And if these are left, it is for sure going to cause some friction and potentially rub the paint. So just hinge these pieces down, turn our attention here to the front and you're going to want to take this section and just completely disengage it and arch it all the way back like so. With that now done, we can turn our attention to this piece and you're going to want to take these here and just begin to slightly wriggle these apart. They are held in via some tabs under here, so just unloosen those, and of course repeat the same process here on the opposite side, so just loosen those up. We can then rotate those around and hinge those all the way up. Of course, repeat the same process here on the opposite side. You're then going to want to take these gray pieces and rotate these all the way around as well so that they are now facing the bottom and ensure that this section here is facing the top. Of course, repeat the exact same process here on the opposite side. So hinge this here all the way around and then the headlight here will should stay at the top so that we are left with something like this. This section here will then compress up and we can just leave those in a position which looks something along the lines of this. And so now lowering the camera so that you can get a better look on what I'm doing, where well, you saw that we did angle all of this up appropriately, we're then going to turn our attention to this section. So for this, you're going to want to slightly angle the shoulders here backwards, take the front windscreen here and just hinge this section out. This is for sure the more finicky area of the transformation as the clearance is near enough minimal. But you're going to take this piece here and hinge this all the way down on a double hinge joint. You can then take this and hinge this section out and of course hinge all of these joints out so that we are left with something along the lines of this. You're then going to want to extend this joint here. So pull this forward and whilst at the same time slightly rotate it as you're going to want to have it bent at a slight degree. You can once again see that the clearance is near enough minimal but just ensure that the LED is off. Bring this here all the way down and rotate that around. With that now done, we can turn our attention here to the back. You're going to want to take this butt plate and hinge this all the way back also. That will then allow for some clearance for us to arch this spinal piece all the way back so that we can begin working here on the front section of the cab. With that now done, what you can do is begin to align all of this up. Now this is more than likely going to untab throughout the duration of the transformation. However, if you have this in an alignment which is similar to the final result, you'll find that everything should slide in with ease. So just try your best to have this aligned up appropriately. And of course, repeat the same process. Once again, the joints on this figure are very stiff and the transformation is for sure very complex in my opinion. So just angle this down and then hinge this section up and tab that into place so that we are left with something like this. We can then take the front windscreen here and just leave that in a position. We can then turn our attention here to the sides and what you'll do here is take this, hinge this all the way up and with that done, you can then hinge this section out and this piece here will snap into place. So of course, repeat the same process, hinge this up and hinge this out and then just collapse that in there. We can then turn our attention here to the back and you're going to want to pull this entire section here away and rotate that up. We can then begin to lift this whole section here all the way up. And then at the same time, you're going to want to ensure that this spine piece here is out of the way. So just push this all the way down and ensure that that there is situated over the top. Turn our attention here to the front section here of the truck and just try your best to ensure that everything is aligned up appropriately. We can then turn our attention here to these arms and what you'll do is take this here, hinge this there out to the sides, take these pieces. I actually tend to remove those as it just allows for some extra clearance, but you'll then want to take this section, hinge this down, and then this piece here will come over the top. And basically, you'll then take these sections, compress those in, and then that will allow you to rotate this here all the way around. And you can see that we do have a tab that will actually slide underneath this piece. So just align this up here and snap that nice securely into place. Of course, repeat the exact same process on the opposite side. So once again, remove this and set that off to the side just to allow for some clearance. Hinge this section out. We can then take this here, hinge that out and then hinge this piece out. Rotate this all the way around and snap that once again nice and securely into place. Turn your attention here now to this section and what you'll want to do is basically just take these here and tuck them into the cavities, although it is easier said than done as the clearance once again is near enough minimal on this particular release. So just hinge this all the way in 
and then just straighten that section out of course turn our attention here to the opposite side and repeat the exact same process so just hinge this section in and down and then now we can begin to straighten out the front section of the truck as for the most part i believe the complex steps are now more or less out of the way so just align that up accordingly and then straighten all of this out what I then recommend you do is turn your attention here to this section. So you'll want to take this and fold this here over the top. And you can see this will snap over the top here of where these front windows are. And then you'll take this here and just angle this section down. And that once again will snap into place. Turn your attention here to this side and repeat the exact same process. So just snap all of that nice and securely into place we can then take these pieces here hinge those out and fold those to the front come here to this side and repeat the exact same process so take this here hinge this out and rotate it around you'll then take this piece fold that all the way down as this will then come over the top and snap nice and securely you'll then want to take this piece and you can see a tab here that will peg into a slot there so just bring this up and once again clip that into place and then this piece here can just come and fill that section out repeat the exact same process here on the opposite side so take this here and lift this over the top and just try your best to align everything up appropriately and then we can take this fold that down snap that nice and securely into place and then collapse that section down also. Turning our attention here to the back end of the vehicle, I now like to bring the legs down slightly as this is where we're going to bring back our smokestack pieces. Now, just ensuring that I have got them on the correct side, you're essentially going to want to take this piece here and push this all the way through and then rotate this around so that it is like this. We can then take this tab and this will of course port into this section and you can see how this will just overlay over the top and just fill out the side section there of the cab. Of course, repeat the exact same process here on the opposite side. So take this and the way that this is going to align will be something along the lines of this. So just shoot that up there. Come here to this section and tab that and then lock that section into place. And then here you can see we have two tabs here and here that will peg into two slots here and here. So just bring this up and snap all of this here into place now you may see a slight stress mark here that is because i did actually originally apply too much pressure to this area so i would definitely recommend be cautious of this it's not a major deal breaker and it's something that i could have avoided if i had taken a lot more care and precision the first time around now turning our attention here to the legs this is for sure the more enjoyable aspect of the transformation so to begin with you're going to want to take the feet and rotate those all the way around we can then turn our attention to these inner sections and you're just going to want to untab those and then hinge these all the way up into place of course repeat the same process so hinge that section there all the way up until it is in a configuration which looks like this we can then take these pieces and just hinge these here out to the sides as when we turn around here to the front you're actually going to want to take this and compress this inward so you can see that it is originally like this you're going to want to slide it all the way out and then what that will then allow you to do is hinge this section out and rotate the wheels all the way around. And you can see that we do have a snotch there that this tab here will very nicely groove and clip into place. Of course, repeat the same process here on the opposite side. So hinge this section down, rotate this around and just align these up until they clip into place. Fold this piece down and then take this section here and hinge this out and then collapse that down. And then in this section, you're going to want to hinge this in until it tucks underneath this piece so you can see that we have a tab here that's going to want to slide under there so just angle this back and snap that into place we can then come to this section and align that up and once again clip that all in take the feet here and fold the front of the toes forwards and then just align those up appropriately and then what we can do is turn our attention to this side. You're going to slightly hinge this piece out of the way as you're going to take this here, hinge this down. And you can see that we do have a slot there that this will actually tab into. So just proceed to align that until that clips into place. That will then allow you to rotate the gas can here towards the front. Once again, the clearance is minimal on this particular release. And then just snap that in, 
of course rotate around here to the opposite side so just shoot this up in there take this here fold this all the way out ensure that this is tabbed in tap that in make sure that this if it has come detached is now secure and solidified and then turn your attention here to the front and just fold out the front mirrors and with all that being said here we have the toy world nemesis prime fully transformed up into what is in my opinion a really solid and awesome looking truck mode and so now very quickly taking a look here at the toy world nemesis prime in the truck mode i think that once again they have done a fantastic job very similarly to what i stated in my original toy world optimus prime review this looks almost dead on to the on-screen prop that we saw used in the movie this vehicle mode is for sure very accurate to the vehicle that optimus does obtain towards the end of the bumblebee movie you can see that similarly to robot mode we have got some fantastic detailing as well as weathered paint applications here for the front in order to make this truck look really beat up and for sure very menacing as we take a look here you can see the weathered and worn paint apps here for the stripes as we take a look here at the side of the vehicle you can see once again very very authentic to that of a real life truck we do also have that very intimidating transparent red plastic i love the floodlights here at the top these two have been given that same teal green that we can see here on the hubcaps as well as on the actual gas cans and you can see some lovely paint apps there towards the front. If I had any criticisms with this figure in truck mode, it would be that the front of the truck looks fantastic, whereas the back of the truck looks a little less desirable, especially here where the feet are concerned. Personally, I would have been happy if they would have just found a way to have actually removed these completely so that you could have set them off to the side. That is really the only area of which I believe this figure slightly fails in terms of the look of the truck mode, but all of the wheels here are indeed rubber, and he is also able to roll really well as well due to them being of a rubber nature now turning to these actual hubcaps you can see that i have tried my utmost best to actually remove these however very similarly to that of the original version if not worse they are so difficult to get out i did try to use a screwdriver on this and you can see that it actually did cause some damage to the hubcap so personally i'm not going to try to wedge those out as you can see i've also damaged myself in the process slightly so for sure these are areas of which i wish the tolerances were slightly more adjusted as on some of the aoi mech figures they were definitely a lot easier to remove and talking of AOI mech figures, here I have the AOI mech Nemesis Prime. Now you can see that it is considerably bigger than compared here to our Toy World version. However, in terms of paint applications, I think that the Toy World version is vastly superior. However, in terms of how the overall truck mode looks, I have to give it props here to this AOI mech one. Whilst this doesn't look as good in robot mode as this one does, in my opinion, I think that the truck mode for sure looks amazing. You can see that it cleans up really nicely here on the back in terms of where this section does cover as we take a look here towards the back of this section it is slightly messy but you saw how complex the conversion was to this main cab section hence why i believe that it does look so awesome so once again it's probably going to be up to your own personal preference on what figure you do prefer i just really wish they would have cleared up some of the tolerance issues on this particular release in order to make it slightly more enjoyable as these should not be nowhere near as difficult to remove these as they are on the final product and so, some final thoughts here for our Toy World Nemesis Prime. Overall, I do think that this figure has turned out rather nicely. Of course, there are some discrepancies in terms of the tolerance issues, mainly in terms of the looseness of the wrists and the incredible tight hubcaps here on the sides of the vehicle modes. But setting those minor critiques off to the side, I believe that the robot mode looks impeccable. Truly a mesmerizing interpretation of the Bumblebee movie Optimus Prime. And this time done in the Nemesis Prime color scheme, for sure makes it look even more awesome than that original figure i love that they have included some additional accessories that we did not get in the standard release of toy world prime they did use some of the accessories that we saw in the deluxe version so this set really is an intermediate it shares similarities in both the deluxe version as well as the standard version so in my opinion you are getting the best of both worlds as a whole set i think that this one is a little bit more worth it than that of the original version i did check some of the online prices and this actually goes for quite a considerable amount less than compared to the standard release of the toy world optimus and consider Considering that you are getting more with this figure, I really don't believe that you can go wrong. Robot mode, I think, looks impeccable. The paint applications, I have always stated in all of my Toy World releases that I believe that they are some of the best paint apps that are seen on third-party products. Transformation is for sure a chore. I'm not going to lie about that whatsoever. Transforming him from robot to truck mode is one of the more complex third-party figures that I have had to encounter, just due to minimum clearance in specific areas, especially concerning the head, as well as when you have to pop the arms in, and of course, you saw 
saw earlier on in the transformation where this entire back region is concerned where you have to pull this section out from beneath the spine so those are for sure areas that I wish were slightly rectified with this particular release but as a whole I think that robot mode and of course truck mode look rather solid so if you are after the definitive representation of a Nemesis Prime that comes with a slew of accessories I would definitely recommend you pick up this Toy World version which currently is in stock right now over at the Iacon store and of course I will leave a link down in the description box below for that be sure to use discount code prime versus prime for a total discount off of your order and for sure feel free to let me know down in the comment section below on what you think of this figure as well as the review i hope that you found this review informative if you did please do also let me know down in the comments and until my next review i'll see you then thanks for watching